Sonic Pi is a music making application which does things a little bit differently. So from what I understand, it uses some sort of programming language to create music. Now since I have absolutely no experience with coding or anything like that, I feel like I'm going to struggle with this one just a little bit. But the website does say that it includes a friendly tutorial, so I might be alright. But anyway, I think we should just go ahead and type some music. Let's do this. So I've just booted up Sonic Pi and I think it's time to start learning how to use it. So I'm just going to quickly go through this tutorial just to get a rough idea of how this program actually functions. Let's get started. Copy the following code into an empty buffer above. And here. Now hit the run button. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, that was simple enough. Let's add something else into the mix. There. And be quiet, right? Okay, what have we got here? Nice, that's a bit dark. Okay, blah, 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 blah. So I'm gonna quickly skim through the rest of this tutorial off camera because I don't really wanna go through an hour's worth of footage of me just reading. So yeah, let's skip ahead a little bit. Okay, so I'm back. I've got a little bit of knowledge of how to use Sonic Pi. So let's go ahead and start making some beats. So I'm gonna start things off with a drum. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a kick drum in thread. I need to do a thread, which is basically, I don't, I don't know. I have no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> but I think it works sort of like a layer so that it plays things on top of each other. I don't really know. I can't do a good job of explaining something I have no idea about, but I'll try my harder. So next up, we're going to go ahead and do a loop. So we'll go loop and sample drum. Yes, heavy kick. So now we need to do a sleep time, which is the time between samples, I think. So for this one, we'll just go 0 0.5 and then we have to end. Let's give this a try. It works, it works. So next up I'm gonna do a snare, so I'm just gonna copy this. And we'll just change the sample to drum. So for the snare, I have to change the sleep time to one. So now the gap between each sample is gonna be double the length of the kick. I think. <laughs> Let's try and play this. Okay, so my theory was right, but now I need to go ahead and add a sleep onto the start of it. So now it should play at the second kick. Let's give that a try. Yeah, there we go. So now I think it's time to go ahead and add in a hi-hat if I can figure out how. So I'm just gonna copy this and we'll change the sample to drum symbol closed. And now I'm just gonna guess that I have to change the sleep time. Let's give that a try. So that's not what I was expecting. So now I need to change the sleep time back to 0 0.5 and then for the sleep before the loop plays, I need to go 0 0.25, we'll give that a try. <laughs> worked. Cool. Now I'm going to go add in an open hi-hat. So we'll go loop, sample, drum. And then we've just got to end this. <laughs> yes. So now I'm just going to go ahead and turn down the volume. So we'll go amp, 0.5. Give that a try. Still a little bit loud, so we'll go 0.2. Okay, I'm starting to get a little bit more confident with this. So let's step up the drums a little bit. I'm going to put in a little ghost snare at the end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, that actually worked. I'm really shocked by that. So now I think my drums are all done. So it looks really messy at the moment. I'm not too sure how to group it all together, but it should be all right. So now I think it's time to go ahead and add in a synthesizer. So we'll go in thread, do loop, do. So now we just have to go ahead and pick our chord. So we're going to D flat four for the chord. And now we just need to pick the chord type. Minor, that'll do. And now we just need to an end and we should be good to run. No, we're not. <laughs> oh, why did it add that on the end? Get out of here. Okay, now we should be good to run. There we go. Okay, so now I just need to pick a sleep time for the loop. Um, go for maybe one. That's good so far. Maybe we'll make it a bit longer, 1.75. Yes. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take this chord here and I'm just gonna duplicate it. So I think I've got my little chord progression done. So this is what it's sounding like so far. Oh yeah, that's complicated. <laughs> so I like the chord so far, but I don't really like the synth sound. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change that. So we'll go use synth and Hmm, maybe we'll just try out a saw for now. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> and now I'm gonna go ahead and add in a reverb as well. So I think it's with effects reverb. Yay! So now we just need to go ahead and Oh yeah. So now I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this and I'm gonna go ahead and add in a bass. So first off we'll just change this to a sign and get rid of the reverb. Okay, so now I need to get rid of the chords. Can okay, I just go like this? And now I just need to put down a couple of octaves. We'll go two. Nice. So I think my bass line's all done. This is what it's sounding like so far. <laughs> yes. I might try and mix up the bass line a little bit at the end. Okay, so that actually worked, but for these ones I need to change some settings because the notes are starting to overlap when they're played too closely together. So since the notes are overlapping, I'm just going to have to shorten them down a little bit. So we'll add in a release. Maybe we'll go 0 0.4. That'll do. So I think it's time to move on to something else. I'm going to try out doing an arpeggio. So for an arpeggio, I'm going to go ahead and add in the play pattern timed function. And now I'm just going to go ahead and specify a chord to use. So we'll just go for D flat 4 minor again. So now I just need to specify the arpeggio speed, so I'm just going to go for 0 0.25 and that should be everything. Let's run it and see what it sounds like. Okay, so that synth sounds terrible and I think it's one octave too low, so we'll just move it up to 5. And now I'll just change the synth sound to something a little bit better. Chip lead? We'll give that a shot. Nice, I like that. I'm just going to try adding a wobble and then that should be good to go. So I think I've pretty much reached my limit on what I can do with Sonic Pi. I know I'm really just scratching the surface. I've barely done anything at all. Believe it or not, I've actually spent a couple of hours working on this. I know it definitely doesn't sound like it, but I've been going back and forwards between the tutorial a whole lot of times. But anyway, let's go ahead and have a listen to what I ended up coming up with. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay, so even though that was really confusing for me to learn, I still had a lot of fun. It's actually really good to think about music creation in a completely different way. And like I said, I'm only scratching the surface of what Sonic Pi is capable of. If you just look on YouTube, there are a whole lot of videos of compositions that people have come up with using Sonic Pi, and they're pretty impressive. I know I definitely couldn't make anything like that. I've still got a lot to learn, and I'll spend some time in the future learning how to properly use the program. And then maybe I'll do a follow-up video just to see how much my skills have improved. But anyway, I think that's pretty much everything. If you like the look of Sonic Pi, make sure to go check it out. I'll leave a link to it down in the description and yeah, thanks for watching everybody. Bye!